The efficiency of any heat engine is based on the usable energy extracted relative to the energy inputted. For a heat energy performing work, the efficiency is equal to the absolute value of the work performed over the heat inputted. We can substitute in the values calculated from the Carnot cycle to get an expression that is generalizable to all heat engines. So the work performed is negative nR times T hot minus T cold times the natural logarithm of V2 over V1. I'm expressing it like this so that when the absolute value is applied later, we still get an expression for the efficiency. The heat inputted occurred in the isothermal expansion. We saw that the work performed in this step was negative nR T hot times the natural logarithm of V2 over V1. Since this is an isothermal process, then the heat transferred is equal to the negative of the work. So the heat inputted into the system is n times r times t hot times the natural logarithm of v2 over v1. So dividing the absolute value of the work by the heat inputted results in t hot minus t cold over t hot. And therefore rearranging this gives an efficiency value which is equal to 1 minus t cold divided by t hot. Let's use this on a real world example so that we get practice calculating efficiency values for heat engines. So in this, what we have here is at a power plant, we have superheated steam at 560 degrees Celsius and it's used to drive a turbine for electricity generation. The steam is then discharged to a cooling tower where it's at 38 degrees Celsius. And so what we're supposed to do is calculate the efficiency for this process. And so we know that the efficiency is just going to be equal to 1 minus T cold over T hot. Now one of the major things that you have to use when you do calculations that is general, it's always good to do this in Kelvin. And this is no different for these types of calculations, especially if the temperature goes from a positive value to a negative value, because then if you end up having a negative ratio of T hot and T cold, then what that means is that then you get an efficiency that's going to be greater than one which is not going to be something that's possible. So you need to always do these things in Kelvin. So if we write these down in Kelvin, we have 560 degrees plus 273.15, and that gives me 833.15. And the other one is 38 plus 273.15, and that's equal to 311.15. So if we write those values into this expression, we get 1 minus um, T cold, 311.15, divided by 833.15. When we evaluate this expression, what we get is 0.63, or 63% efficiency. Here is a summary of what was covered in this lecture. An adiabatic process means that the heat transferred, or Q, is equal to zero. And so what this results in is that the change in internal energy delta U is equal to the work of the process. This relationship can be used to determine the work done during an adiabatic process, meaning that the work is equal to the integral over T1 to T2 of the number of moles times the molar heat capacity at constant volume times dt. A heat engine is a device that converts heat to work or work to heat. Common examples of these are power generating facilities and refrigerators. And finally, the Carnot cycle provides an upper thermodynamic limit on the efficiency of a classical heat engine.